Okay, uh, well, it was not automatic. I uh, would not say that I had from the beginning preference for mathematics. I was simply a normal kid with, with a lot of interest. Uh, I was, uh, uh, I loved mathematics and physics at school, but also literature, history and other things. And I participated in uh, mathematics and physics Olympiads doing well. And it appeared somehow gradually. That is, um, when uh, choosing the high school, I choose one which was of a technical character, uh, having nuclear, nuclear in its name, which was at that time, it was known to be very difficult. And so that was a challenge. These days nuclear is rather a dirty word, I'm afraid. And then I proceeded to the university. Uh, and in fact, I studied physics. I graduated in a theoretical physics. But since I uh, uh, always tried to understand things from first principles, so I drifted gradually to mathematical methods. And I appeared in a position which I characterize. Well, I'm all, all my life I'm a physicist for mathematicians and vice versa. Uh, as I say, uh, it, it came gradually uh, after, uh, after graduating in theoretical physics. I started working on mathematical methods and somehow uh, it remained like that. Uh, then we started writing a monograph on Hilbert space operators and uh, I was slowly, slowly merging into the math environment. Uh, well, there, there are many, but uh, you are asking rather about a revelation. Uh, I, I would not say there was a big one, but I remember some nice moments. For example, when I, uh, well ahead of the curriculum, discovered for myself complex numbers, or uh, when I found that there is a proof that uh, uh, the square root of two is an irrational number. Fortunately, in contrast to Pythagorean Greece, you do not pay by your life for the, such a discovery. I uh, work generally in the mathematical methods of uh, quantum theory. Uh, one big topic uh, of my research is quantum waveguides. That is what happens with quantum particles when you put them into tubes, networks, graphs, and uh, things like that. And there is a lot of interesting mathematics. And then, of course, uh, you find uh, results which are rather unexpected. One, uh, which uh, somehow I value highly, is uh, the relation between geometry and interaction. That is, that you can bind particles in purely geometrical way. Uh, suppose that you take a cube with hard walls, put a particle in it, uh, so that's a trivial system, and then you bend the tube. Uh, with a classical particle nothing happens, but in quantum mechanics suddenly you find that the bending uh, creates localized states. And that was, that, that, that was uh, a moment which I really enjoyed, uh, if you may uh, speak about Heureka moment, because uh, that's the Helmholtz equation, that's something which people try uh, to analyze for 150 years. And here was a solution which escaped everybody. Well, uh, I uh, certainly I uh, worked with uh, my colleagues, so we were both excited. We started, uh, it was first a rough, a rough idea, so we started uh, thinking how to prove that. And then uh, it appeared that it's true. Then other people, uh, two, three years later, uh, strengthened the, the CRM. And it appeared as starting point uh, of a rather interesting research topic. Uh, the latest one. Uh, well, uh, the, uh, in the last, uh, let's say, two years, uh, I'm working on uh, quantum systems which 
have a, a big instability in the sense that the Hamiltonian uh, depends on a parameter and when the parameter uh, crosses some critical value, the spectrum changes dramatically. I mean, say from pure point to the uh, continuous covering the whole real axis, which in quantum mechanical terms mean that suddenly the particle can escape to infinity and that's also a very fascinating subject. Well, it's not a big surprise to me. First of all, I came to Serum, it's about 30 years. In 86, there was an international congress of mathematical physics here in Limini. And the very first evening, there was a glass of wine in the court of Serum. So I remember well this, this environment. And of course, uh, I uh, had a long-term collaboration with uh, CPT across the street. Uh, so uh, I spent uh, probably about two years in Marseille and I came to Serum uh, very often. So no need to introduce it to me. Unfortunately, uh, a couple of years ago, my main collaborator passed away. So that somehow the collaboration slowly, slowly terminated. But I like the place and I'm happy to return every time. Uh, well, the uh, president is the highest officer and it is uh, he or she is responsible to uh, the council, which is the highest, um, the highest uh, body of the society, uh, responsible for running the everyday work uh, of, of the EMS. Uh, the job is challenging uh, uh, as a whole because, uh, you know, the society, Europe is a complicated continent. We all know it's a patchwork. And uh, the architecture of the European Mathematical Society uh, corresponds to this structure. That is, we have uh, member societies, some 60 of them. Some countries like France have three member societies. Uh, and, and we have individual members. So altogether, uh, the uh, European MAT community, which we are representing, are many tens of thousands of people with uh, different wishes, different needs, and you have to steer all that. Uh, well, uh, to, uh, to, to keep uh, the society well functioning and to develop it. That is, uh, I, I mean, to, to get more members, to make it financially sound, uh, to uh, decide uh, about the future events, like for example the, uh, uh, the Congress, which will follow the one which is this summer. This is uh, something we have to prepare for the Council, which will be Berlin this summer, and many tasks like that. Well, mathematics is done everywhere in the world, but frankly, with all respect to the other continents, Europe is a cradle of mathematics. And uh, European mathematics is, I think, among the strongest uh, in the world. And our task is natural to keep this position and to strengthen it. Uh, certainly, uh, we have some weak points. Uh, for example, uh, we are not immune to certain brain drain and we are not good uh, as say our American colleagues in attracting uh, uh, people from abroad. This is to be improved. Collegial and we certainly uh, collaborate in many respects. If you ask specifically about the European Math Society, so we have collaboration agreements with uh, other societies, with the Americans, Canadians, Australians. Just recently we signed a collaboration agreement with the Mathematical Society in Japan. And it is manifested in uh, common enterprises. For example, last summer uh, we have a big conference which was organized by the European and American Mathematical Society together with the Portuguese Society 
in Porto, some 1,100 people, a very good conference. That's a serious thing and uh, EMS pays a lot of attention to that. Well, uh, you know, I, I mean, as a married man and a father of three daughters, all of which uh, work in academic environment, uh, I'm well aware that uh, the uh, female career in science is uh, something which is fraught with difficulties which we men are free uh, of. And so we are uh, doing our best. We have a, uh, we have a committee uh, for problems uh, of women in mathematics. We, for example, uh, have the uh, EMS lecture and the tradition is that every second year we ask our uh, women in mathematics committee to nominate a lecturer, etc., etc. As, as, I, as I said, I, I, I mean, it's, it's a duty of each of us to help all the gifted women uh, to uh, be visible, to, to have optimal uh, condition for development of uh, their careers. Uh, on the other hand, frankly, I'm always reserved when it comes to quotas, to numbers. And uh, I will tell you why. Uh, it often happens, well, I, I will give you an example. Uh, when I served uh, on the European uh, Research Council with a colleague in the Scientific Council, a German lady, a Nobel Prize winner in medicine, who always shouted at us, you're killing them, those few gifted girls. You're putting them into every committee, every lecture, and you basically prevent them to work and to develop their talent. So, I, I mean, one has, to, uh, one has to do everything reasonable, but not mechanically. Uh, certainly I support uh, this, this uh, endeavor uh, because uh, Matt uh, can find some sources of inspiration inside, but uh, the outside world, the other sciences and the life of the society are one of the main source of inspiration. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, quite uh, unexpected uh, connection um, appear. I can uh, tell you a story. Uh, my uh, younger co author some 15 years ago, he was in Mexico, in Cuernavaca, and he observed some strange phenomenon in public transport, which is not organized. Everybody who has something which moves uh, puts name on that. And he noticed that on the crossroads there are young people watching the passing time and selling the information to the next driver. Simply because you, if you have such a bus, you don't want to be immediately after the next bus. So he managed with a big trouble to collect this data and work it out with a PhD student. It appeared that the distribution of the distances between the buses are governed by the uh, random matrix ensemble, unitary matrix ensemble, and uh, the model was uh, then mathematically developed by Percy Dave and other people. And uh, it appeared to be connected to quite deep things like Riemann-Hilbert problem. And I was really proud then when this work of my friend was quoted at the ICM in Madrid 10 years ago as one of the really inspiring examples. So that's maybe a good illustration that you should look around. EMS already supported the candidacy uh, because we think that with all due respect to the other part of the world, uh, world uh, after 16 years uh, there, there is the highest time that uh, the ICM returns back to Europe. So we wrote a letter of recommendation to IMU and I, uh, I talked to the IMU president about that. But at the same time, I have to say that uh, I don't know how much you know about that, but there is another European bit in preparation from St. Petersburg. And uh, from what I heard from their owners, uh, it will come with a heavy political weight behind. 
So I think the delegates of the uh, General Assembly of IMU in uh, Sao Paulo before the Congress, they would have really difficult question to solve. But Paris is one of the focal point of mathematics and I think it has good chances to uh, get the Congress. Mm -hmm.